Hello everyone and welcome to the NewTek 3Play 3P1 Get Started Training. Now in this video I'll show you how to create events. Now back in the 3Play 3P1 interface, the two live outputs of the 3Play can be set to live mode for monitoring the broadcast live, or clip list mode for playing back instant replays, or playlist mode for playing back melts or highlight reels. Now you can cycle between them by simply selecting the output on the left of your control surface and then selecting the mode on your control surface here in the middle. Now the control surface for the three play is the most efficient way of using the three play system. Now in this demonstration, I'm only going to focus on the live and clip list mode for now. Now within the clip list itself, you can adjust the interface however you like. So for example, right now I have my clip list mode here in the middle, and beneath that is our playlist, which I'll get to in another video. So what, I'm going to go ahead and just collapse the playlist all together so that we don't see it and can only focus on the clip list. Uh, or there is another way of stacking the clips and playlists next to each other by going up to the top of the screen and selecting options and single pane view. So now you can have your clip lists and playlists right next to each other. So it's really up to you how you want to customize your interface. But let's go ahead and bring this back to normal here and I'll collapse our playlist all together so that we're only seeing our clip list. You'll notice that at the top of our clip list we have nine different banks to choose from so that you have different areas to work with when creating your events. Now within the three play interface, not only can you grab events during your live game, but you can also add media during your broadcast. So for example, commercials or branding or transitions that you want to use between your events. Uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to explain the four different ways of event creation. Basically, it's market, cue it, and play it. Now before we even start getting events, we need to make sure that we are recording our event. So to do that, we can use our mouse and hit record at the top of the interface. But again, the three play control surface is the most efficient way to use your three play. So you can do that by clicking record at the top of your control surface. Boom, red lights on. We are now recording all four channels of video at the same time. There are four main methods for creating replays. There's the mark in, mark out method, the mark out only method, the mark in only method, and the delayed playback. So first, let's take a look at the standard mark in and mark out method. Now you can select the A output and monitor your cameras by selecting live like we have right now. And if I want to switch between these angles, all I have to do is hold angle at the bottom of our control surface and type in which angle that we want to use. So either angle one, two, three, four. All right, so let's go ahead and just keep on angle one for now. And let's watch this game here. And to create an event, I'm going to select the set in button. And now you'll notice that I have a event starting at the very bottom of the screen here on zero dash one. Now what's nice about this is I can continually hit that set in button and just change the endpoint for that event. So you'll notice that in this column here, my endpoint will start to change time-wise. All right, so let's watch this play play out for a bit here. A little razzle-dazzle. Oh, oh, still going, and yeah, bucket. So set out. Cool. Now we have our event in our clip list under event 0-1. Now, before we go a little further, let me just start to point out all the different uh, sections of our playlist on the clip side of things. So, on our event ID, that's basically, you know, when we started our, uh, our clip. Now, you can also go through in here and delete these from here, even monitor the audio levels or export those to your export media uh, option, which we'll get to in a bit. Also, this is where your endpoints are going to start, which you can adjust by using your mouse and simply scrubbing through the timeline here. Uh, you can do the same thing on the out point, and next to that is our duration, which basically just says that I have an 18 second clip here to choose from. Now, you have your camera's angles one, two, three, and four to choose from, so let's go ahead and title this something that we can remember. Boom. 
Now our event 0-1 has a title in here for Razzle Dazzle, just so I can remember that later on. Now you can do that for each of these different camera inputs on the three play system as well. So you can have this say Razzle Dazzle uh, camera one, camera two, three, four, etc. Uh, so you might want to take note of that for when we start to add clips to our playlist. But let's get back to just this clip. So now we have this clip in our event list and now we want to play this back within our broadcast. Now to play these clips, we'll make sure that we have our A output selected on our control surface and then click clip list to play the event that we just captured. Now that you have the replay ready, you can tell your director, replay ready, and they can use this source in their production. So to play the clip, simply hit play on your control surface to play it back. All right, so let's see him drive to the hole. Oh, nope, faking out. Go around the outside. And you can supply your own color commentary here if you want. I'm just being a dork. All right, back to the outside and swish. Awesome. Now, let's go ahead and play that one back. To stop this clip, you can just hit stop twice to reset that clip. Now I want to show you how to use the review mode using the T-bar here on the left of your control surface. So let's go ahead and hit play. Now you can use this in review mode kind of like a gas pedal. So let's hit play here and we'll have this play start and then slow it down like this. Got that fake going in. You can even stop it by Bring it all the way down. Let's ramp it back up here. All right. And then slow motion this. Splash. And speed it back up as we need. All right. So let's go ahead and reset that clip by hitting stop twice again. Now you can also use your T-bar to use this to move the clip forward and backward if needed as well. So to do that, hit this toggle button here at the bottom and that will illuminate. So let's go ahead and hit play. Now I can use this to ramp the speed up to 200% or even move it backwards if I want to do that. So we can kind of just have them go all right and move it forward and then let this play out a little faster. Now let's slow that down and speed back up. Cool. So our different ways of being able to play back these clips within your clip list mode. Now once that replay is over, Select live to resume monitoring the live output of the broadcast. Now let's play back that same event, but this time I want to cycle between my angles to show that same action from four different viewpoints. So let's go back and select clip list and I'll toggle that off. Now I'm going to go ahead and click play now to switch between my different angles and restart that uh, replay. What I'll do is hold shift angle, and then press the angle that I want to use. And you'll see that that restarts that event from the very beginning of our event. So let's go to three, and you'll see we'll start to get the wide shot, but from the beginning of that particular event. Now, the way I'm doing that here for this particular play seems kind of awkward, so let's go ahead and restart this, and let me show you a different method of doing that. Which, uh, so let's say that we want to show this exact same play, but jump to different angles without restarting the play. So to do that, we'll click play to watch the output. Now I'm going to hold down the angle button on my control surface, and then I can either use my arrows to go back and forth between these, swish, or I can hold on angle and then just type in those numbers by hand. Now when I was switching between my angles, I was doing it blindly. I kind of don't know what I'm looking at, so there's a way to monitor those by bringing on our clipless preview mode. Let's take a look. So we can bring in some preview windows by going to the top of the screen and selecting options and clipless previews and boom, now I have a preview window for each one of my four camera angles so that I'm not jumping blindly. I can say, all right, uh, I can see that this is coming up here. Let's hold down, uh, well, let's start the play again. Hold down angle, let's go to two. Go to a wide shot real quick, back to two, back to one, back to two. Nothing but net. Nice. Now let's take a look at the second method for creating events called the mark out only method. 
Sometimes during a game, you don't know when an event will start, so you could miss on clicking the endpoint to start your events. So for that is the mark out method that will create an event simply by clicking set out. Now you can select how long you want that clip to jump back in time by going to the top of your screen under options and under one button marking, select the time frame you want to use for this. So I have this currently selected as 10 seconds. So now whenever I click the mark out button, it will record a 10 second clip, which I can then view. So, all right, I wasn't paying attention here. Oh, brick, that's cool. We'll go ahead and hit my out point from here. And now you'll see in my clip list that I have a 10 second clip to choose from. So we can replay that brick back however we want. So oh, let's go back to our clip list and we'll play it back. And now you'll see that that starts 10 seconds from when I hit that uh, out point. So now I have a replay to use however I want. Now you can always adjust the in and out points by using your mouse to adjust these back and forth. So if you need a little bit more time, you can still do that. Now the third method for creating an event is by using the mark in only method. So you can create an event by clicking the set in point and there will be no definite end point to that particular clip so that it can play out as long as your director wants. Let's take a look. Now let's go back to live mode and let's go ahead and watch this game here. Now using the set in method, all we have to do to create an event now is simply click set in. Ooh, get that out of here. Now we have this event that we can play back with no out point because there's still some more action going on here. So now you'll notice that I have an event showing up in my clip list. Now to play that, let's go ahead and click clip list here. And now I have that replay of this breakaway. Yep, yeah, get that out of here to use however I want. Now, since I'm still recording this game, I have no out point for this particular clip, which means I can have my director just keep playing this clip as long as I want, as long as he wants, and get all of the action. Now, the fourth way to create an event is using the delayed playback mode. Now, this can be done without creating an in or an out point. To do this, let's just watch the game. That's it, he shoots. He scores! Now, to do an instant replay of this in a delayed playback mode, simply grab your jog wheel and move it a quarter turn. Now from here, we can cue that replay up. Let's back it up a little bit here, right before he gets the basket. All right, right at that pass. And as soon as your director calls for an instant replay, you can hit play, and that replay will start right from there. Now once you're done, you can hit stop and go back to live, ready to create another event. An important note with this delayed playback method is that it will not create an event in your clip list. You've only delayed the event playback to use as a replay. Now another technique that I wanna show you that you can use on the 3P1 is called out point padding. So sometimes when you're doing a broadcast, your director will be using your replay and then just might let it go a little too long. And so you have a clip in your clip list that will end and then, oh no, now we're stuck on a dead frame. So with out point padding, this allows you to play your event back with just a little time afterwards to account for that. Let's take a look. Now to set your out point padding, go to the top left of your screen and select options, out point padding, and you'll see that there are a few different options to choose from here. So let's select 15 seconds just so we have a little bit of extra time. Now, let's go back to the game and watch what's going on. Let's set an endpoint from here. Go over there. Set up your play. All right. It's going through. Boom, it's in. So let's set our out point. Now, Let's go to our clip list and we'll see that this clip that we have is 14 seconds long. So let's go ahead and play that back. So replay ready, we'll hit play. Now, keep an eye on this. 14 seconds is how long this clip is going to be, but I've added an extra 15 seconds after. So the play is coming out here. All right, bucket goes in. And this is where my out point is but you'll see that this keeps going because I've added that out point padding just to give us a little bit of extra time in case they haven't cut away from your shot.
Now this concludes the 3Play 3P1 section covering creating events. And in the next video, I'll show you how to use the playlists.